Federico Fellini was born in 1920 in a middle-class family in Italy. Uh, his father was a traveling salesman, so when they were when he was younger, he spent a lot of time traveling all over Italy. Fellini started his career as a in the film industry as a screenwriter, writing his first credited film before The Postman. Before Fellini directed any films, he was a uh, writing for a radio station trying to avoid the draft because he didn't want to get up to go to war. His films are said to be a unique combination of memories, dreams, fantasies, and desire. And that's kind of where he drew his inspiration from. But he is also involved in Italian neorealism. When this film was made, uh, World War II has ended, and uh, Italian neorealism is kind of like a post-war uh, cinema movement. And this was considered the golden age of Italian cinema. World War II seriously altered Italian cinema. Italian neorealism's impact was enormous, but not only for Italian film, but it also influenced French New Wave. It was the first use of non-actors in Italian cinema. It was the first post-war cinema to take the actors away from the studio. I mean, even in today's society, filmmakers take advantage of what is going on economically. You can see this in La Strada, where the story centered around the poor working class people during these tough economic times. Fellini also started showing uh, severe signs of depression in the final three weeks of filming La Strada, which you can kind of see in some of the scenes where it's possible that it had an effect on the way the characters played out. You see this on uh, The Fools when he's talking about death and then kind of joking about how nobody's going to remember him after he's gone, and then you see it in Zambino when he breaks down at the very end of the film. And then there's also the theme of death throughout the movie. Uh, her sister dies at the beginning of the movie, which ultimately leads her to leave. And as she leaves, she meets Zampano, which ultimately causes her death. Zampano walks out onto the beach. He's looking out at the ocean, trying to look as if he's looking for something. He's looking for her, but also he's realizing He's alone. There's nothing else. Completely lost because the death that's occurred around him. You see the character Zambino break down at the end of the film, and you see the fool talking about how no one will miss him after his death when he's talking to the girl in the film. Although this could be considered somewhat of a coincidence because the story was actually written several years prior to it being filmed, but you can probably tell that it wouldn't have been the same if he was didn't have depression while he was filming. In 1963, he also released his film Eight and a Half, which is considered one of his greatest films. And before his passing in 1993, he had a total of 27 directors credits. Lots of movement in this in this film. You know, in particular, you can see a lot of action going on behind the characters. Like, life will be moving at, a, at the same pace, but in terms of Zapano and Gelsamina, they were in their own little world where things didn't move as fast. So you saw people doing backflips behind them. You saw, you know, Sometimes nothing will be going on. So throughout the movie, there is a strong sense of isolation. Beginning with Gelsomina's home, you see nothing but fields around her house, and you get a sense of isolation. Also, it shows how alone and poor that they really are, and it kind of gives a background of her life, how she grew up, and it kind of explains a little bit about her. When she's leaving Zampano, you also see the isolation. She's walking alone. There's nothing around her. But, you know, grass, fields, there's nothing. Gelsamina, the, the main actress in this film, she was living in poverty and she took a job to try to get herself out of this poverty. Gelsamina's character was, was more of a light in his, in his eye. You know, she made him feel, she, which is something that he is not accustomed to, be, to do in his line of work. At heart, she was a true child in this film. You see all the children are just treated very poorly, and she's almost like them, and she's also treated poorly. Gelsamina was talking about how like, she didn't want to live, like she wanted to kill herself, uh, and the fool told her, don't kill yourself. When she's walking away from Zampano, you really get the feeling of her helplessness. 
um, and just how alone that she really is. Also, there's the mistreatment of women. Um, throughout the film, she's constantly being ragged on by the men. With Zampano, she's constantly being hit, being mistreated. There's just a bunch of affection that she's lacking. And also with the fool, you know, he's just constantly calling her ugly, that she's not pretty, that she's not what a woman needs to be. In Zampano's life, you know, she was very iconic, but he didn't see it. That's why she was asking him, you need to start thinking, you need to start, you know, because that's what she learned. Zampano began to grow as the film went along. You know, his heart began to expand, and he began to care more for her, even though that he was so harsh towards towards her, because he knows in his mind she can go away whenever. But it's the fact that she stayed despite everything, which made him blossom more. The last scene, to me, was more of him actually looking up and hearing everything that, you know, that she said, because there was a line in there that she said, who will live with you? Would you care if I died? Uh, do you leave like me a little? I think he heard all of that, but you know he didn't dignify it with the response. And that, that, that final scene was just him looking up and, and hearing and replaying all those questions. And, and that was him just, you know, him breaking down was, you know, was the final nail in the coffin. You know, he, he could feel now and he never felt something like that before. During this time, many people were looking up to find grace or salvation, which you can see by the constant images of the cross and nuns influencing the actors. Even in today's society, uh, when times get tough, people start looking up and looking for, uh, like, the will to live, like, salvation, uh, like, believing in God. And during this time period, right after World War II, there was a lot of poverty in Italy, and many people were looking for a greater purpose, even when uh, the fool was picking up the pebble and said, even this pebble has a purpose. Unconditional love could also be a theme of the movie because she's always there. She doesn't leave. 